We're working with a worksheet called Candy is Dandy in Excel. And this is a worksheet where we had each person had a pack of M&M candies. They spread them out on a plate and divided them by color. For example, Elizabeth had six red, 15 blue, six yellow, eight green, eight brown, 11 orange for a total of 54 M&Ms in her bag. We did this activity in class. It was a small group and we're going to use this spreadsheet. So 1.3.1 is change a worksheet tab color. So here is our worksheet over here on the left. And if we left click to identify that tab and then right click, we have a pull up menu that allows us to change tab color. We go to tab color and here I think I'm going to change this M&M data to yellow. You can change it to uh, multiple colors, but that's how you change a worksheet tab. I'm going to go ahead and do one here for pie chart. I'm left clicking pie chart tab to identify it. I'm right clicking to pull up my menu and then I'm going to tab color and let's make that one bright blue. And so now we have the pie chart worksheet with a tab color of blue and the M&M data worksheet with a tab color of yellow. Our next is 1.3.2 domain is to rename a worksheet. Well, these tabs are our names for worksheet and instead of M&M data, let's call it M&M candy. So I'm going to left click on the tab M&M data. I'm going to right click to bring up my pull up menu and I'm going to go to rename. At rename, I'm going to call it M and M candy. So you can see the difference in the spacing. Once I click onto my worksheet anywhere, it will automatically save that name as M and M candy for my worksheet. All right. So the next domain change is 1.3.3 change worksheet order. Well, we've decided we want our people to see the pie chart first because we think it's so important to see these averages of our 54 approximately M&Ms per bag. So I'm going to left click party chart and I'm going to pick it up and just drag my mouse to the left of M&M candy. I let go and I have reordered my worksheet. I do want to show you another way to move a worksheet. I can left click on pie chart and then right click. And again, I have my pull down menu. See how it gives me a move or copy. There is a task on the Excel certification exam to be able to move or copy with this step. So I'm going to click move or copy and I want my chart, pie chart to move to the end. I can also create a copy of that pie chart. So I'm going to create a copy. Excel will rename it for me. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see, oh, it made the copy here at the beginning that I should have clicked move to the end. I apologize for that. Um, so we're going to try this one more time. I'm going to right click the tab. I'm going to click move or copy. I'm going to say that I want to move or copy this one that's in the front here. Let's do that. And I want to create a copy, move it to the end and go OK. And so now it makes my other copy move to the end here. It's exactly like before. And it made a copy of my M&M candy is dandy data and made that copy move to the end. We can do that with our pie chart too. I'm not quite sure why we didn't select that when we were just trying. So we're going to click our pie chart. We're going to move to the end. We're going to create a copy and click OK. And there's our pie chart. Copy three now. And we have finished our information for domain 1.3.3, change your worksheet order. Domain 134, modifying page setup. When we modify page setup, we 
we can start our Excel file in the Home tab and come to Page Layout. Now right now we're pretty big. I'm going to go ahead and make us a little bit smaller. And we're going to look at how our page is printed. So once we go to print the page, there will be these marching ant lines down and you'll see these little black dot lines to show you the page. So let's take a quick look at that. We're going to go file and print. And once we do that, it shows you that this worksheet is going to print like this. But then we take the arrow from the backstage view to go back to the home view. And you can see we're in page layout tab. You can see the little marching ants, hopefully. I'll try to make that just a little bit bigger. And so that's where the page will cut off. And if we go a little bit smaller, you can see down here we're, we're way down column IJ, row 45 and 46. Down here is where the page cutoff is. So unlike Word, you also have a page to your right and a page underneath and catty corner. So one of the things that you end up doing in page layout is orientation. Right now our orientation is very much like a picture frame. Um, and this is called portrait. So you would hold the piece of paper up tall and that's how it would print. If we change to landscape, those marching lines move over and we basically turn our page. So I'm going to go back to file print where you can see the preview and see how our page is turned. And now it's longer horizontally or where the grass meets the sky left to right. So we'll go back and we can of course switch our orientation back to portrait. We can also work on margins. Margins is the trim area around your chart and we can make those narrow or wide. Making those margins wide means when you print or when you show that worksheet that the area on the edges of the paper where it's not being printed is wider. Those can also be customized and very often going into margins, custom margins, you can be asked to have a different left and right margin than possibly a top or bottom margin. So we're going to make our top and bottom margins pretty big at two inches. So you can see what that looks like. We still have room for a header too. Like right here, here's our header and our footer. And I very often go into custom margins to get to my header footer. But let me show you about those margins and how much bigger they'll be. We can even print print preview. And now you can see it even cut off some of our chart and put it on another page. We have two pages and that won't work out. So sometimes if you make your margins too big or um, your header footer too large, then you won't get the print you want. However, if we were to go ahead and use that orientation, which we were talking about earlier, turn it landscape, then those wider margins might actually make it look pretty sharp. So it's in the top third of the paper or top half of the paper, but the charts all the way on the page, even though we made those margins large. I'm going to go ahead and go back into margins and go back to normal. Do realize normal is not APA or MLA. You normally want one inch around on those margins. Okay, so we've looked at margins. We've looked at orientation. We can look at size. Normally, this is the paper you have is 8.5 by 11, but you may be using larger paper like a legal pad paper. And if you were doing that, the size you and you put that in your printer, you would want to change the size here so your print was more effective. Print areas can determine um, maybe you want your headers like our red, blue, yellow, green to repeat on other pages. You can choose print area and have that print on multiple pages. A page break will let you click a between a certain row and insert a page break. 
so I can insert page break. And now if we see how I did that between row 15 and 16, now we can go back to that file print preview and you can see, well, you can't really notice, can you? But it actually is cut off. Um, so the page break is on row 15 and 16, so higher than we had it before. Print titles means you can choose a print area. So maybe again, we want row two to print across all worksheets. And we can say that that's what we want to repeat at the top of every worksheet. And we can again, click a print preview. So we could see that that row would print across other worksheets. Domain one, three, five, insert and delete columns or rows. Howdy team, we're working on rows and co columns. When we work with rows and columns, we also need to talk about, for example, C is a column. And I'm going to color in the cell right here. And 13 is a row. So I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. Again. C is a column and 13 is a row. And to label this cell, you can see I clicked in cell C13. It's labeled up here in our left hand corner. And to name that cell, I would go C colon 13. All right. So what we're going to do first, it talks about knowing how to insert and delete columns and rows. So if we want to insert a column right next to C, I'm going to click on column D, left click with my mouse. Then I'm going to right click with my mouse and go insert. When I do that, it inserts a whole column, a new column D now, and you can see it because we don't have any data in it. And it inserted it right to the left of the column I clicked. If I want to get rid of that column, I again click column D to identify it. I right click column D and I can hit the delete button or I can scroll down and hit the delete selection. Now, down here in rows, it's very similar. If we want to insert a row, I've clicked left clicked on row 13. I'm going to right click and say insert. And you can see right beneath row 13, it added row 14 and it moved my cell down. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so it added this row right here, row 14. If I decide that I want to delete it, it will delete the data that's in that row. And I'm going to show you cell C13 that's highlighted is going to disappear. Let's do that. I'm going to click row 14. I left click to identify. I right click to have my pull down menu and I hit delete. And that information that was in that row is gone as well as that row 14. Okay. Does that make sense? So if you had done all that, you'd want to save, of course. And that is inserting and deleting columns and rows. And next, One, three, six, change workbook themes. To change workbook themes, we need to go from the home tab to the page layout tab. This is similar in other Microsoft Office products. We come to theme and then over themes, you can see I can, I'm, I'll brush over them. The colors slightly alter as you scroll over the different themes to actually choose a theme you would click that theme i just clicked faucet and then when you go to print those colors should be present in the printed version see how my green is a little bit different and my orange is now got, has green lettering so that's how that theme was changed
Howdy team. Today we're going to work on domain 137, adjust row and height. So what I'd like you to realize is that we're on a Mac today and it's very similar on the Mac as it is on a PC. A, B, and C are our columns. If we want to make the column narrow, we can change our mouse in between the two columns and drag to make it more narrow. And you see your width. It went to 7 point, there we go, 3. Or we can take it all the way up to 10 or as big as we want. But there's also another way to do it. You can right click your mouse. And when you right click your mouse, you can choose column width. And that enables you to type in a specific number. So let's make this big. Let's go 30. And then we go OK. And we've made our first column width of those months 30 wide. All right. Let's learn a little bit about rows now. Rows can also be heightened. So we're going to start with row 5. And we're going to grab in between, see how my mouse changes, in between 5 and 6. And we're going to make that 30 as well. So just like we did with columns, we can make rows bigger and smaller. And so now I'm going to go down to row 10. I'm going to right click. And then I have a row height, row height suggestion. Well, I want to make this one rather large. So I'm going to go 50 and apply OK. And then we've made a row 50 in its height. So that is how you adjust row height and column width in Excel. All right, so we were back in margins. We went down to custom margins to bring that page setup dialog box and we went over how to work in the margins tab. Now we're going to go look at header footer. Um, header is when you're like putting your name and um, your class for a page, but footer is usually down at the bottom. So maybe that's your page number. Um, maybe that's your copyright information. Very often we are asked to do a custom header or footer. We're going to do a custom footer today. When you pick custom footer, this will print down at the bottom of your page. So let's say we want our name in the first portion of the the trifold footer in the center we're actually going to put page number so right here these different icons enable us to put page numbers dates times um the file path the worksheet path i'm sorry this is the worksheet path this is the entire file name and you can even insert a picture down here. Maybe you have a little icon you want to display on the bottom of your paper. And of course you can format that picture. Okay, so in the center, we're gonna insert our page number. And over here, I'm going to hit tab. You can also just click your mouse to go to this right section. I'm gonna insert the current time. So there's my time, I click okay. And now I can click a print preview and you can see down here at the bottom, we inserted a footer with my name, with the page number and the current time, 837 in the morning. And when we print that, that'll show it is interesting when you're looking here, you don't see it. Okay. You would have to be in um, your header footer to see that or in print preview. I think we've done a pretty good job going over the page setup. Please explore these options and be comfortable and familiar with them.